welcome to the Purpose and Profit Club podcast for nonprofit leaders, mission-driven creatives, and social entrepreneurs. Get ready to stop dreaming and start doing. Here, ideas become action. We prioritize purpose and profit. You ready? Let's go. Welcome, Andy Kay, to the Purpose and Profit Club podcast. I'm really excited. You're actually our first like behind the scenes client case study to come to the come to the podcast. So welcome. Nice. Thank you so much. I'm excited too. I was happy you reached out. Um, I've been a long time follower and client. So really excited to be here today and be the first. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you're the founder and executive director of the Bloom Foundation. Let's start there. So tell us about the Bloom Foundation, why you founded it and the type of work you do. Sure. Yes. Um, so why I founded it was going through middle school, um, and which is just in general a tougher time. Um, and we had dial-up internet at the time. And so we would have to dial up to the internet, but there was a website called School Scandals. And uh, you could write whatever you wanted on there and write about other people. So someone wrote, Andy is a loser, created a username. It was very confusing to walk through my first incidents of cyberbullying. And even at a young age, I was looking for resources on, I knew about bullying um, and I knew a little bit about cyberbullying, but I didn't know what you could do in terms of your mental and emotional health when you encounter it. So I kind of noticed that gap at a young age. And then it happened again in college and um, same thing. Uh, online forums and then Andy talking about Andy. And so that was a very painful. And I, again, still didn't know what I could do to kind of address that, what it did to like my identity, uh, my mm-hmm. sense of purpose, self. And so that really, I started studying it um, in college and wanting to know more about cyberbullying in general, especially because by that time, um, technology had advanced. And um, I, I think that in terms of the bullying programs that are available, it's all very focused on anti-bullying or bullying prevention. Um, but I really wanted to fill that gap um, of like the aftercare and support, um, mm. recovery and support of going through it. So um, a few years later, I got into the nonprofit world. My first job was at Illumination Foundation in Orange County, which is a wonderful organization. Knew I love nonprofit. And so a few years later, after I graduated, decided to start uh, Bloom Foundation and love the name. The name came from this quote, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know that we are seeds. Just that idea that even if you if you feel like you've been buried, you might have been planted to bloom and help others through um, what you've gone through. And yeah, so that's why I started it. Um, and I started in Orange County with a wonderful support system great people who came together, who believed in the mission um, and wanted to also see, you know, see this come to life. And so super grateful for the wonderful support and community um, that was there. Yeah. Awesome. So one of the things that you said was, and you're so right, like there are these anti-bullying resources. So both my children are in elementary school and it's like, those are the types of information we parents kind of receive emails, get home with, you know, they have different learning blocks, but I will say I've got a third grader now. That's my oldest. We have already been in situations where it's like, this kid said this thing to me, what do we do? Right. So it's like, what are are you supposed to do when it's happening? And particularly in the middle school years, who I remember I got bangs. I shouldn't have gotten bangs. It's a whole thing. Right. And and it's like, This idea of you're already, your body is changing, you're going through all the social and emotional changes and health and physical changes and all that. And then this is happening. And I think parents feel a little or a lot like we, we are not exactly sure what to say or do. And now I think maybe that thing was would be like, well, therapy, try that. But I think what you've done is normalized it. And the one thing that I think we all do, I all want to know is that this happens. Like Brene Brown talks about this, this idea of like, we're not alone. And therapy doesn't help address that. And I love what you do because this speaks to that is you're bringing girls together who are saying, yeah, this is happening. This is happening to me. I'm in Atlanta. This is happening to me. I'm in California. This is happening to me in Austin and bringing them together. So talk a little more about that. 
Yes, love that. Thank you. And Brene Brown's amazing, definitely the leading voice in this space um, where vulnerability can lead to connection um, and a lot of what we've put together. So we I worked with a licensed therapist to put together our journal workbook. Um, and a lot of that kind of covers a little bit of my, about my story. So you initially know you're not mm-hmm. alone. Um, someone else has gone through it. And then you go through a little bit of a lesson on um, growing through what you go through. So that could be identifying those lies that may have been said about you and replacing that with the truth. It could be thinking about the future, what you want to accomplish in the next seven years. Um, What are those coping skills or strategies that you can uh, rely on? Um, And then how can you in turn help someone else after growing through it yourself? So, yeah. I I love this curriculum so much because again, I'm thinking about it from my own experience, which now being a parent and it's like, I can tell my son and daughter all day, like, that's not true. It's not right. Um, And they're gonna be like, okay, mom, whatever. But when you have kind of this curriculum and then you have somebody else who's saying, listen, I've been there too. And this is what the other side of it looks like. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. So right now, anyone can participate across the country, right? This is as a virtual component to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we are doing journaling clubs. So you can sign up for that digitally and then um, come join on Zoom. And it's um, we'll have just like some music and time to journal together. And then it's a safe space to process and heal. And yeah, it's so good. Okay, amazing. So thank you for telling us a bit more about your story. And I didn't know, I knew the middle school part. I didn't know the college part. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy for me knowing you going, it's like, how could that be? You're amazing. You're like, what? But then it's like, yeah, the internet, the internet, the internet. And as we are learning more about there's like so many positives to the internet and so many negatives to the internet and just having this toolkit in our pocket, both as a resource for ourselves and for our loved ones, I think is, is really, is really important because it's like ever changing, but the practice of just what you just walked through of like, almost like, is it true? What is the truth? And then working people through the other side, I think is, is so valuable. Right. Yeah. You're giving me ideas too, as you're talking, which (laughs) so I'm going to write some some (laughs) down on the side, but what's your, what's your idea? Tell me. (laughs) yeah um I okay so right now it's in a a physical format so our journal but you can also join on um but I okay so you gave me the idea of an app (laughs) where you can do it accomplish it on your own um that way or self-paced anyways just a light bulb moment yeah and it's like the reason why I love this is journaling for me is one of those things that is like it's like anything, like, like any health and wellness habit. I'm so glad after I did it, but journaling for me is not one of those things that I'm like, I can't wait to journal today, but I'm so, and so I love that you're bringing people together saying, get, let me give you a prompt. Let me give you community. Let me give you a certain time and date that we're going to share in this for the people like me. Some people are natural avid journalers and like, it's like, I'm staring at a journal. And so I put it, I try and have it, stack it into my practice, into my work day, but because I'm always happy on the other side, I did it. So I love the like collaborative exactly. element of it to be a little sticky. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And it, it's so true. It's that aspect of, um, what was I going to say? The aspect of, oh, going to the gym, you always feel better right after, mm-hmm. um, and just taking 30 minutes to just do it together. Um, mm-hmm. And then we asked, um, this was in our session just yesterday, in one word, how do you feel after? And um, the girl said, calm, like um, grounded, better. And so, yeah, it's just so cool. Like you feel good after, Uh, but it does take that little bit of extra. um, And, you know, everyone's different. Some people love to journal independently, um, but some people like to have it be a social thing where you kind of show up. So Mm -hmm. it's a fun option. Love it. So we're going to dig into visibility. So this past Mm -hmm. year, I would say that's one of the things that I've noticed because you're in Amplify Social Impact, you did Outreach Genius Live. And one of the things that that makes you so successful is number one, you always show up, you always ask great questions, you're very engaged in this work. And I've noticed a difference of you 
really stepping into visibility. And I remember it was, I think on LinkedIn that you tagged me in your courage sandwich post. So let's talk about the courage sandwich, what that is to you and maybe why the concept resonated. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. And a, a, one other takeaway I've got from you, which led to the courage sandwich too, was that main character energy, yeah. um, choosing someone who is your role model for main character energy. I know Alexis from Schitt's Creek. She's wonderful. Yes. Um, so, so I did say that. Um, but yeah, the courage sandwich is when you encounter something that might be, that might require courage that might be challenging for you. Um, but you set up yourself for pre and post positive self-talk. And I love that. I've heard of the, um, the post, um, but the pre is really important too. And making sure that you're setting yourself up, um, with just, you know, at the end of this, you know, you're going to be okay. And like, are you Mm -hmm. already did these steps? So just really building yourself up is so important. Um, and then you do the scary thing and then having that post ready is so huge. Um, or maybe I've heard of like having the post after, but I think even in the pre, you want to set yourself up with the post, if that makes sense. So like having the post didn't know where you're writing already, um, Mm -hmm. before you even do the thing, um, so that that's ready to go. And after you've done the scary thing, you can reference that. And I think that's just so smart because we do so many scary things (laughs) every single day when we're putting ourselves out there, when we're building something, when we're working on something that doesn't necessarily have a roadmap. Um, And so I think that this courage sandwich was just so helpful to have in my toolkit um, as I would be more visible or um, do the things that I don't necessarily feel maybe qualified for, or um, just, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a daily battle of um, kind of overcoming self-doubt when you're Mm -hmm. in like this. Um, so I love the curd sandwich. All of the founders that I work with, it does not matter our tax designation that you're a nonprofit and I'm a for-profit. We go through this. It's like this feeling of like, can I even do this? Am I even qualified enough? I don't even know what I'm doing. And it's like, one of the things that you said with the courage sandwich just now that really is helpful is I think as a society, we're, we're, we're trained to like give ourselves a reward when we do a hard thing. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, I went to the gym, so now I'm going to go to my favorite smoothie shop. I don't know. Yes. But we don't really do that on the front end, which is mm-hmm. what you're talking about is like, what is the pregame that makes going to ask that funder for more, a higher gift than you've ever asked them before, or going to pitch somebody a partnership and you've never pitched them before. Like, what is that way that you want to talk to yourself that makes it not only like not awful, but like to where you're talking to yourself kindly, you know? And so I think that's, that's kind of the through line that I was hoping to get with a lot of, a lot of um, people that came to these classes is just how do we do it to where it doesn't feel like a grind? How do we do it where that inner monologue isn't just like critical, which is so much the norm for founders. It's just, it's just how I think like our default could be pretty critical. Right. Right. Yeah. And a lot of perfectionism in there too, right? We have very yep. high standards, very um, high pressure on ourselves. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think that is so true. Um, and then you're so right about that reward. It could be, yeah, you're like a latte or, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and I think we can be good at that. But what I like about the courage sandwich is it's addressing that like the emotional aspect or the mental and emotional aspect of it too, because every time Mm -hmm. you're doing something scary, um, it can trigger even thoughts of shame. Um, one Mm -hmm. of my mentors calls it shame gremlins and he may have gotten that from, um, Brene Brown, but those shame gremlins come once you do that, uh, courageous thing. That's right. And you really need kind of those, you need something to uh, address that, you know, it's like guardrails. Yeah. Because that's right. Because then what happens is you pitch the funder, you do the courageous thing. And then the drive home, you're like, could have done better. Didn't kind of flip, kind of tripped up here, kind of got wobbly there. You know, it's like whatever that thing is. And then it's just like, instead of going, hell yeah, you did that. Like, oh my gosh, that was the first, yeah. You know, it's like, and it's just that reminder of like, 
I think if anyone's struggling with like the difference of how the chatter would sound is how you talk to your best friend, that's how we want the chatter to sound. Like if you were writing the passenger seat, when your best friend went to that funder meeting and did that hard thing, you would not be like, you know what? You were really kind of tripped up on your words at, you know, this mark and you should have worked. You would be like, come on, you're awesome. Let's celebrate you. Let's, you know, yeah. 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 And I didn't make this correlation before, but now I can definitely tie it in, but that's what's in our chapter one of the bloom journal is writing down those lies or writing down those things that, um, you negative things that you may be saying to yourself and then addressing each one with an empowering truth. And exactly like if you're stuck leaning on, what would you tell your best friend? Um, and then writing that out so you can really focus on that. So that could be an additional tool, um, with the courage sandwich. Um, and it's so helpful when you write it out because, um, and I think sometimes I'm at the point where I'm like, I can do the courage sandwich in my head, you know, uh-huh. it's ready to go. And it, it, it is a habit. Um, but I think writing it down helps really unload it from your mind onto paper, which can That's be right. really helpful. Um, and then I was also reminded of Renee Brown's quote of sometimes the bravest thing you can do is just show up. And I think that's so true. And at the end of the day, if you aren't, if you can't even think of maybe something positive at the end of the day, you can just say, well, you showed up, you showed up to that funder meeting, you showed up to that presentation and that matters. And that's sometimes the bravest thing you can do. Oh my gosh. Yes. So let's talk about why being visible was important and a priority for you this past year. So maybe if you would share just the why behind that or some of the things that you've been working on. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's a good question. I think there was a time in um, 2018 when I was being very visible on Facebook. I was writing um, a lot of quotes, a lot of things on my mind. And um, I think it was helpful at that time. I was definitely writing a lot more in the morning. It was part of my routine. And so I would get these thoughts and I would write them on Facebook. But then I remember um, someone, someone made a comment to me that was along the lines of like, you're writing too much online. Um, maybe less typing more like talking, you know, in in person, which it was a very harmless comment, but for, I, looking back, I can see how I just stopped. Like I just stopped, Mm -hmm. um, from that, just one simple comment. And I think, you know, that was 2018, then 2020, the pandemic came. And I think that just like threw all of us off a little bit. And, um, I just realized I kept kind of not showing up online as much. Um, and then, so, yeah, so the reason why visibility is important now is I think I've taken the time to even think about that, even that comment I had forgotten about a little bit, but then I remembered I enjoyed showing up on Facebook or I enjoyed, you know, thinking of things to share out into the world. I I enjoy building bloom, but sometimes visibility is really hard for me. Um, to mm-hmm. kind of get over, um, get over that self-promotion or, you know, um, mm-hmm. so there's definitely limitations there, but I think I realized that I do, um, I do enjoy it. And I do want to share the message of what we're trying to convey. Um, and that the more people that can re- be, uh, recipients of it, the more that we can build like a kind of world together and, um, I do think it's important. I think these messages are super important for not only uh, young women, but just all of us to hear this message. That's right. Um, so that's kind of why it's important. And I'm stepping out more. And I also know that the opportunity is so big. Um, and that's why I really enjoy ASI um, and just being a part of your course, because there's so much opportunity out there in the digital world we live in um, that it's fun. And, you know, it's a great way to even meet people or just, you know, um, build connections and, um, share the message out. Yeah. Okay. You said so much there and I'm really glad that you shared. This is interesting that you shared. You're like, wait a second. I did actually like writing. I did actually like writing on social media and being visible. And I I just want to like normalize that the more that you put yourself out there, the more digitally, the more that you're going to have like that one person and then it'll be more that's like, I don't like that, you know, 
Um, I, I, I may have told you this story before, but the one person that said, Christina, on a feedback form, um, you're too excited. You're just too excited. <laughs> I was like, that's feedback? I don't know. I don't know that that's feedback. There's going to be like in order to show up and have people who are like your perfect fit people that are like, yes, I'm all in. That's what I've been waiting for. Where has this been? You're going to have some people who are repelled, right? Who are like, I don't get it. I don't know why Christina is sending so many emails. I don't know what they're, you know, they're, they're doing it wrong. And reminding ourselves of that, you know, when I, when I get that feedback, that truly isn't constructive or sometimes it may actually be constructive. Like, Hey, you send too many emails, but if I've decided that's how many emails my business sends, then that's feedback doesn't, is, it doesn't align with me. And so I just want to like underscore that for anyone listening that like part of being visible and turning the volume up on that, unfortunately means exactly what you experienced, exactly what I've experienced is there's con- constructive and non-constructive feedback. I could think of a handful just right now right. and putting it through your own filters of like, mm-hmm. is this helpful? Is it true? Um, and do I want to just release it back into the world? There's, um, who is it that, um, God, she's a content creator. Her name's Elise, Elise Myers, maybe she's hilarious. Okay. I would say Brene Brown, Elise Myers. Okay. Okay, good. So she has this thing where she's like, nope, I'm going to give that back to you. Yeah. I remember she went through a huge phase where she was like, I'm finally figuring out how to wear my hair curly. She actually has hair very similar to mine. She's been wrestling with it her whole life. Is it wavy? Is it curly? Is it not? And she was like, I'm going all in to make it curly. And guess what? 90% of her followers said, I love it. It's amazing. And 10% were really cruel. They were like, it looks weird. Why are you doing that? And she, and you know, going up, oh, I'm going to go ahead and give that back to you. And especially if it's like has to do with your own your own, uh, you know, your, your own looks. And it's just like, nope. And just kind of a reminder of that is like, that's part of the visibility thing. Or even I've seen it in um, organizations where if you ask for too many opinions from too many board members and stakeholders, and everyone's going to say, put the thing this way, do it this color, call it this, there's just going to be too many opinions, right? And sometimes yeah. just going, oh, is that part of my filter and my process that I actually ask for 10, 10 people's opinions? Or do I, do I give it to my trusted, you know, so other person and then we go and then, you know, yes, no. yeah. you, you mentioned that too. Yes, absolutely. Like, yeah, but <laughs> I'm like, yes, I love it. I love it all. I think I was, I was so in, um, into what you're saying that I like forgot what I was going to oh, say, um, but I do agree. And I think, yeah, wow. That's good. Yeah. We just, we just, oh. Yeah. I was going to say, I, yeah. And I definitely want to encourage that if you do get that one, um, one or two or whatever voices, don't stop. Like I don't do, stop. I do. And I, yeah, if you encounter that, don't stop. Don't, it does not mean stop. And I wish mm-hmm. I knew that. And you know, it doesn't mean that it might mean something completely different, but take the time to really consider that. Ask those questions that you, you said, uh, is it true? Is it helpful? And if not give it back, um, mm-hmm. and keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, when you're doing things like this, you, you uh, and this was a lesson I, I had to learn, but it's like, you're not in the business of people pleasing and, you know, yes. it, it will get very tiring. It will get very hard to, if you're just focused on that too. So it's like, that, learning to prioritize that. That's right. Oh. You cannot people please and fuel your mission forward. Mm-hmm. Like you just like the two are like opposing, I don't know. Uh, right. And it's yeah. difficult because like, I, I think m- maybe many founders are, might be Enneagram twos. I'm an Enneagram two, which is the helper. It's the personality mm-hmm. type, but, and they are, they can be people pleasers. So it's like yeah. knowing that, knowing your personality, but making sure that you're self-aware or intentional too, that you're not, you're, you're being able to balance all of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about there. I don't know when it was, but I know that you showed up to one of our coaching calls. I think it was for Amplify Social Impact and you shared your digital toolkit. And I was like, yes, I was so excited. So tell us what a digital toolkit is and what you use it for and why other organizations should have one too. Love it. Yes. So that definitely came out from teachings, your teachings, um, and being very inspired to create my digital toolkit um, and street team. This is something I could send to my street team 
which um, those are people who want to share uh, our mission online. Um, so we did a mental health awareness month campaign for the month of May and put together our toolkit. We shared caption ideas or options and had uh, graphics. And this was just on our website. It was a it's like kind of a different landing page for this mm-hmm. toolkit. And it was great because we could send it out and they can pull from it. Um, and it was a pretty easy ask. Um, but yeah, it was very simple. I love the section. Well, Christina shares it better in her course. It's the whole section on digital outreach. Um, and you, I just followed your steps and yeah. you just, it's not, it's not hard, um, to put together, but I do think every organization should have something like that. So it's super easy to pull from. And again, it's not hard. And then you have something when um, someone does raise their hand and sit and they really want to be passionate and share about your cause. So yeah, that's right. Great. So instead of saying to that, you know, supporter, volunteer, donor, like, Hey, could you share a fundraiser? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then they kind of never do. This is a a online digital resource that literally is like A, B, C. It's so easy. Um, it's it's scalable. So if there's 500 or five of those people, it's something that they all can pull from. And yeah, you did a great job. And it was like the other yeah. part of me just loved it because it was like visually branded beautifully. It was all into your voice and your aesthetic and the entire Bloom Foundation vibe. So it was mm-hmm. great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Another question for you, if you were talking to another nonprofit founder or maybe somebody in development or fundraising who feels stuck in a plateau, what kind of advice would you give them? And it could be a revenue plateau. It could be just like a, I just feel maybe the, the, this time of year, I hear a lot of overwhelm. I hear a lot of that kind of that energy, that scramble. What might you say to them? Hmm. Yeah. I would say go on a walk without your phone. <laughs> Ooh, good one. Okay, why? Because I that was just really a big change for me. I and I would say go to a coffee shop and get a latte, come back, but make it a long walk. Don't take your phone. And I don't know what it is, but I do think you'll get a ton of new ideas. You'll get um, a different perspective. The overwhelm, you just need to walk away for a little bit. Um, You need to give yourself distance from all the screens, from all the things, um, and just go out into nature and the latte will help. There's something in that too. (laughs) Get an iced latte. This is like literally (laughs) a recipe. Um, And then walk back. But I And maybe take a notebook. Um, But I really just think that through getting away from all of that, um, you'll get your mind. Our minds are always working on our business. They're always thinking about it and just giving that time, dedicated time to do that, I think is super important. And with that, I think the motor exercise of walking allows Mm -hmm. your brain to even more kind of get away and think and solve problems. Um, so I highly recommend that. Um, I did that I think the beginning of summer and I had the idea on the way back um, after I got my little latte to do a summer series um, email campaign and uh, it all came together on my walk. I wanted to share a challenge that can be a very simple social emotional learning challenge. We'll share the benefits of it and we'll do an email blast social media. And then I came home, wrote it all out and implemented it with my amazing team of interns and it was great. So I just highly, and the first challenge, of course, was going to walk without your phone (laughs) because I just think it's like very, very helpful. Um, And it might sound oversimplified, um, you know, but it's extremely helpful. (laughs) I think I couldn't agree more. I'm like a thousand percent with you. Um, And it also, wait, it's flying out of my brain. It's going to come back. Oh, got it. It reminded me of anyone who's like, but I am overwhelmed and I do have so so much to do. I do not have time to go to a coffee shop. I do not have time to go for a walk. What is mind bendingly true is that when you do the thing that is like away from the work, yes, you get the idea. But not only that, you said it just a few seconds ago, you came back and you planned the whole thing. You work yeah. faster 
better, more efficiently, more optimized. It is, it's why we need to go on vacation. But I think if you can't go on a vacation, um, you go for an hour walk, you yeah. go away. I had an, an experience recently with a designer I work with and we were updating some assets for a client and she had sent me a draft and she said, here's the draft. Um, no rush on edits. I'm going to be out of town next week, totally offline. I was like, okay, cool. So I'm looking at it and I didn't get her edits. The Monday she comes back, she sent me a new email. She's like, hey, I took a look at this. No, 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 no. I redid them. Here it is. What happened over a vacation was her brain took a vacation and she like 10 X her designs, not because she was thinking about the client, not because she was at the beach. She was, you know, swimming, right. but she came back and she looked at it and she was like, ah, I don't think this does it justice. I don't think this is the lift we want. And I know her, she worked very fast and busted out something that was like 10 X better. And it was like this, this is the walk. This is the thing. This is time away. And then it's just it the, the, the value of it is, is again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Oh, so good. I'm glad you came up with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, yeah, I agree. It's like, if you can go on a vacation, um, but if you can't, you can do a walk, you can yep. 20, 30 minutes. Um, you should be taking lunch breaks too. So just, you know, um, but yes, I love that. And I know you went on, you've gone on some retreats too, yep. and that can just be so life-giving. Um, which can be a great extended time. I think just time away from your phone too is huge as well. Yeah. I agree. And I think it's it's really easy to forget that simple thing and it's really easy to be like married to it, but yeah, leaving the house and just going out without your phone is magic for sure. Yes. Okay. Um okay, let's see. Anything else you'd like people to know before we wrap up and also how can people get involved and learn more? Yeah. Um, anything else? I think I, yeah, I really like that. We kind of double clicked on don't st stop, keep going, um, making sure you're really intentional about even before you kind of begin knowing that maybe criticism might come or um, self doubt, just kind of being aware of that. And then setting up those guardrails, I think would be just so helpful and not knowing you're not alone in any of it, whether that's bullying, whether that's um, going through a really tough time with your business or things like that, you're not alone. There's definitely community and support around you. Um, and just, yeah, setting up those guardrails as best you can, just because it's part of life and growing, um, but you'll be okay. But definitely keep going. I think when you have that mission or that kind of dream on your heart, um, it's really important to just uh, follow that through as much as you can and want to. Oh, I love that. And how can people get involved? So if they have a loved one, a friend, a family friend who they know is maybe experiencing bullying mm -hmm. and what would be the next best step? Yes, definitely go up is our website, hellobloom.org. Um, and we have our journals there that you can get. I, I just think that's a great gift too, or just something to have. Um, and we've heard just it help um, a lot of people process. So definitely the journal, um, but reach out on our website. We'd love to have you be part of the community um, and join our journal club and different offerings that we have going on. But yeah, awesome. website. And then we're also on Instagram at Bloom Foundation. Amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. Last question for all of our guests. What is one thought that you like to think on purpose? So very similar to the courage thing, what is a thought that is a go-to you like to kind of keep top of mind that keeps you going? Yeah. So they tried to bury us, but they didn't know that we are seeds is where the name Bloom Foundation came from. I do lo love that. I love going back to that, knowing that whatever might be trying to bury you, you can still rise above, you can grow and you can help others. You always have that option. So I love to kind of go back to that and think about that on purpose. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for, for sharing your story. And we, we went a little deep today and I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. I think that that, you know, it's interesting. I think as, as teens and preteens and younger, we experience bullying in different ways. And then it kind of shows up in different ways. We don't really call it bullying as much as adults, right? Yeah, right. Um, but it's a really important reminder to like be kind to yourself, get resources, you know, get the support. And um, so thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. It was great being a guest and part of the first of your series. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Thank you.
Like what you're hearing and want to take this to the next level? I want to invite you to go to purposeandprofit.club to watch my free class. In there, I will tell you the number one thing that's keeping your nonprofit or social impact business stuck and what to do instead. Go to purposeandprofit.club. Think you've reached out to everyone in your network? Are you out of ideas to get noticed and get funded? I hear you. That's why I'm giving you a chance to steal my prospect list. Yes, you can generate leads for your nonprofit or impact-driven business. Grab my mini training and list delivered to your inbox instantly. Go to splendidcourses.com forward slash prospect.